Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we'll be finishing off our possible playstyle series for the Demons of Chaos. We've covered Sunesh, Nurgle and Zinch, so now we look towards the Blood God Khorne. So without further ado, let's begin. So far we have covered three of the four Chaos Gods when it comes to possible playstyle in Total War Warhammer 3, yet Khorne might be the most drastically different of them all, purely because this god despises the use of magic, and thus none of the members of his armies will have any use of any of the known spell laws. This might understandably turn people away from possibly playing a Core Knight faction, as of course magic is extremely powerful in the Total War Warhammer series. It is perfectly understandable to think that the lack of magic would put you at a great disadvantage against your enemies, but think of the Chaos Demons of Khorne in a very similar way to the Dwarfs, where a high magic resistance on your troops will be your friend here. Sure, your enemies will still be able to damage you, but at a much reduced rate, which will benefit you not only against spellcasters, but any enemies that you may fight against in melee combat that would have magical attacks. This would also apply to range attacks, and to give you a perfect example, the Sisters of Avalon, a very popular and quite powerful ranged unit in the High Elf roster, uses magical attacks, so imagine charging your forces directly to them but not taking as much damage. With all that being said, I wanted to cover this section first, as I know there were some fears from some people in the community due to Korn's lack of magic, mostly believing that Korn's forces might be be one of the weakest, but don't you worry about that, there are some workarounds that will keep him at least at an optimal level. But now let's talk about the basic battle strategy. If Korn's armies features a mixture of mortal and demon servants, then you will have a wide variety of different infantry type units. These are often compared to berserkers, where most of these units themselves would either be wielding additional hand weapons or great weapons, but shields are not very common. Bloodletters would be your glass cannon infantry, often being flanked alongside by Warhounds of Corn. These would be your most basic of demons, and they should be fairly powerful in melee combat. Of course though, they will be a tad more weaker than others, as they are, as I said, a glass cannon, so you need to be careful as to how you move them, or move them in terrifyingly large numbers. As you progress through your infantry roster, it is expected that you'll start being able to unlock your mortal followers, Chaos Warriors, Chaos Chosen, and so on. These units would be expected to act in the same way as the Bloodletters, however this time of course they'll be able to wear some heavier forms of armor, making them much more durable to physical damage. You will also be able to benefit from a strong monstrous cavalry unit roster. Juggernauts of Corn can be ridden by both Mortal and Immortal Servant, and they're extremely powerful and very durable. These are often represented in lore as line breakers. The Juggernauts were normally used in the tabletop to disrupt the enemy and hold them in place, while then the infantry units, which were normally a tad squishier, would then charge in and do their damage. It's very much a 1-2 aspect. So as you can see, the emphasis on corn in lore and on the tabletop was always about getting up close and personal, and this will definitely be a difficult faction to get used to, especially if you're not used to fielding melee specific armies, as you're going to very much lack on range here, and obviously have no magic whatsoever. Of course, Korn's forces do not lack in the form of support aspects. This is normally represented in the form of highly mobile yet quite deadly chariots, the Blood Throne of Korn and the Skull Cannon of Korn. Both of them can be easily used in the normal way as chariots, where you'll be able to flank around your enemy and perform some devastating charges. However, each of them also have their own battlefield specific roles. The Blood Throne itself is more of a buff unit, so you will want to keep that close to your actual troops. Charge into your enemy by all means, but charge into it in such a way that you will also get close to your warriors. 
The Skull Cannon, on the other hand, is of course a cannon, but extremely mobile, and it is expected to be able to move and fire at the same time, so you might be able to get some decent positioning. Of course, the cannon itself serves as a way to attack enemy castles without needing any other siege equipment, and it's most likely expected that when on the normal battlefields, it will act as a form of chariot, so that way this unit itself gets a multitude of different uses in your roster. Now, with all that said, yes, this is not going to be an easy race to play. The Warriors of Corn on the tabletop were always quite powerful, but only if you got into melee combat. The lack of range and magic is a bit of a clutch. Now, because of this, I do believe that Creative Assembly and Games Workshop will be a tad more inspired, making use of a Age of Sigmar unit known as the Slaughter Priest where the Slaughter Priest itself would work in a very similar way to that of the Empire's Warrior Priest. This is essentially a way to have magic, but without actually having magic. They would be in a form of Blessings of Corn, a hero-type character which will be able to bestow upon buffs upon your armies. Something on a temporary basis, more or less, could possibly work quite well. Maybe even some constant buffs, as long as those units remained in the same area of influence as the Slaughter Priest. In fact, this would work in a very similar sense to that of the Blood Throne, but in a more powerful level, as most likely this would be a hero character. And the reasoning for this is this is much needed in Korn's roster. As of course, it will bring some extra form of balancing to be able to have Korn on par with other factions. But as you can see from here, you're going to be up close and personal. Korn's tactics on both lore and the tabletop, which is my main reference for these types of videos, is all about a complete charge into your enemy lines. Stopping them from firing, stopping them from casting, you just need to be there and be able to hold them down as you rip them apart. It's kind of hard to imagine how exactly they will play on the battlefield in Total War Warhammer 3, as obviously you lose out on a lot of tactics here. Without having some basic range, you lack the ability to be able to corner camp or even kite your enemy's forces, which are both very common tactics in Total War Warhammer. This might be one of the more harder factions for the player base to grasp, as this would obviously drastically change everything. But what do you guys think about the possible playstyle in regards to Korn? I'm curious to see what you guys think about a pure melee build. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.